Okay, so today we're going to create an explosion effect using the visual shader. And that is the end result. Okay, so first we're going to create a new special node. Inside we're going to add a new node of mesh instance. We're going to make a mesh and new sphere mesh then we're going to go to our material add a new shader material inside we're going to create a new visual shader now inside we're going to create a new vector so new vector then we're going to create a vector constant and we're going to give it these values then we're going to connect it to a vector operator and we're going to get a new time input and connect it to B in the vector operator we're going to use the multiply We're going to create a new UV to get the UV of the mesh and connect it to another vector operator. And we're going to use the add. Then we're going to create a new texture. Texture function. And we're going to give it uh, a new texture that you can get from Google. Just say t just type inside the uh, alpha hexagon and find one that you like. So so we're going to just put it inside here, and we're going to connect it to our UV. And again, we're going to create a new texture. This time, we're going to create a new gradient texture. We're going to gradient and new gradient. And inside it, we're just going to pick the colors of the explosion effect. And connect it to our albedo and emission. So we're going to work on the alpha now so we're going to create a new scalar uniform and we're going to call it time and it's just going to create this shader parameter that we can control for our GD script so if I move it to let's say about 3.5 you can see the explosion on the right and back to 0 Okay. Okay. Then we're going to then we're going to connect it to our scale function, and we're going to use tangent. Connect it to another scalar operator, and divide it by three. I'm going to connect it to another scalar operator using the power, and connect it to our texture connect it to another scalar operator we're going to use add by 0 0.05 then we're going to subdivide it we're going to take one and subdivide it by the output here the output then we're just going to connect it to another scalar function and using the truncate then just connect it to the alpha okay so let's go to our script just create a new script in spatial okay so before we use our script we're going to go to project project settings and inside our input map we just going to create two new actions the first one is going to be called fire and the second one is going to be called stop fire 
and we're just going to connect it to our left mouse button and our right mouse button okay so inside the script we're going to create an unready variable called sphere and it's going to be of type node and we're going to make it equal to our mesh instance we created so this one and we're going to create another variable called sphere time it's going to be of type float and it's going to be equal to 0, 0.0 then we're going to create a process function and inside it we're going to uh, create an if statement so if the input that is action pressed fire if I'm going to click the left mouse button it's going to make the sphere time equal to linear interpolation and we're going to make the linear interpolation work on the sphere time so it's just going to work on let's see if you go to our visual shader it's going to work out on our shader parameter that's called time so to make it work on the shader parameter we're going to call the sphere get surface material zero set shader parameter and we're going to give it the string that's called time which will connect it to our shader parameter and for the value we're going to use our sphere time okay so else if input is action pressed stop fire meaning we pressing we are pressing the right mouse button then the sphere time is going to use an again linear interpolation and it's going to want to go back to our zero in the shader parameter and again we're going to make the sphere dot get surface materials material zero dot set shader parameter and we're going to set the parameter of our time using the sphere time value okay so if I press play and on the right is the shadow we created so if I press the left mouse button and keep pressing it's going to do the explosion effect and if I click the right mouse button it's going to go back to zero and again okay so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it